Well, 7.01, I think we'll get started. Good evening, everyone. Let's uh, call the meeting to order and uh, let's take a roll call. Remember when you state your name for the record, also state your location. Mr. Curtis, you can start. Yes, I'm here in beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan. All right, thank you. Ms. Beaky? Uh, Woody. Oh, are we... oh Woody, go ahead, Woody. I wasn't sure if you were calling out or not. Uh, Woody I... Gantina here in Royal Oak. Great. Next. And Beaky in Royal Oak. All right. Carolyn Douglas in Royal Oak. And Mike here. Royal Oak. All right. And Mr. Klooster. Yes, Eric Klooster in Royal Oak. And I'm Gary Casada. I am also in Royal Oak. All right. So the first order of business is the approval of the meeting minutes from April 13th. I assume we've all had a chance to review those. Is there any discussion or a motion? I move to approve the meeting minutes for March 9th. Is there a second? Commissioner Douglas is seconded. Any discussion? Okay, we'll call for the vote to approve the meeting minutes from April 13th, 2001. We'll uh, take a roll call. Mr. Curtis. All I can attest to is that I was indeed absent. All right. So that's an abstention, I think. I, I guess so. Gina. Yes. Ms. Beaky. Yes. Commissioner Douglas. Yes. Mr. Mayor, you are also absent, I believe. I had an opportunity to watch the, the video and uh, can certainly vote to uh, support the minutes, but I'll vote yes. All right. And Mr. Klooster. We'll have to abstain as well, as I was also absent. All right, motion passes, the meeting minutes are, are adopted. All right, um, before we move to public comment on non-agenda items, is there, uh, are there any uh, amendments offered to the agenda today? All right, seeing none, I believe the next order of business is to call for public comment on non-agenda items. Are there any such Comments. Chair Casada, members of the Planning Commission, there were no public comments on non agenda items. Uh, there's just one public comment, and it's in reference to F1. All right, when we get there, and that's just for the record, that's Ms. Schwanger, yes? Yes, Carol Schwanger. Okay. All right, so. Um, I may we have the right agenda here. All right, so what we have here is new business under agenda item E. This is a public hearing on a special land use permit and, and it says and site plan. I'm not sure Mr. Twing will have to talk to us about that. There was an email that came in late. Uh, this is at 1304 East 11 Mile Road. This is uh, Camellia's Mexican Grill. And uh, Mr. Twing, why don't you bring us up to speed on this? Uh, that's correct. You do have a, a special land use request and report from the planning division in front of you, as well as the associated site plan. Um, the two special land use items is, is that it is an existing restaurant with uh, a liquor license for the sale and consumption of uh, alcoholic beverages. Um, that's an existing operation uh, with an existing license. Um, what's proposed for you this evening is a technical expansion of that in the terms of an outdoor uh, service area or cafe. Uh, that cafe would be located on private property. Uh, it's basically in the six foot uh, setback the, that's in front of the building along East 11 Mile Road. Uh, the site is zoned neighborhood business. 
Uh, it's basically between Blair and Vermont on the south side of the road. I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with it. The expansion um, as a seasonal outdoor cafe is technically considered an expansion of the business. Therefore, it's an expansion of the liquor service operation. The second part of it, outdoor service or outdoor cafes are also considered a special land use uh, in the neighborhood uh, business district. Uh, so there's two, two activities here that are related to the special land use request, uh, and it's all contained in one report. And I think as far as the special land use goes, you can deal with it with, as one action. Uh, as I said, they're proposing the outdoor seating area. It's about 35 feet in length, covers the front of the building area. Um, the setback or the green space area is about six feet in uh, depth. Um, they're proposing uh, five tables with uh, approximately seating for 10 patrons. Um, they're also proposing some facade renovations on that north side of the building in terms of uh, uh, overhead doors. Uh, two of them provide uh, open air and access as well as one access door on that side. Uh, in terms of parking, uh, the outdoor service area does generate a demand for an additional uh, four parking spaces under the zoning ordinance. Uh, according to the site plan, they have 33 uh, parking spaces um, based on the existing facility and the uh, outdoor service. They're only required to have 30, uh, so they are in compliance with the number of parking spaces. Other than that, uh, the, real, the real discussion item and changes, I think, are related to the landscape uh, plan uh, that's been submitted. Uh, that was uh, a, a related email that I sent out to the Planning Commission uh, this afternoon uh, when I received it. I believe it was submitted by the architect to staff uh, last evening. Um, and I'll let them touch on uh, the landscape uh, revisions that you want to make, but the plan that was in front of you and has been posted, uh, they were calling for the removal of uh, what are three evergreen trees, as well as two deciduous trees. Uh, and those are identified on the plan. Uh, the planning commission will recall that the tree replacement ordinance that was adopted uh, and put in place uh, requires not only the replacement of those trees, but the replacement based on the number of inches and or height of those trees that are removed. Uh, you'll see in the report that uh, uh, some 70 feet of height of the evergreen trees is being removed and the uh, two deciduous trees are total about 24 inches. Uh, what's being proposed to put back does not quite meet that uh, uh, two for one standard. Um, they're proposing to put back about 15 inches of of, of um, deciduous trees and about 18 feet of evergreen trees. So there is a deficiency there. Uh, you will see in the report that the options are for the planning commission to accept the plan is submitted. Uh, you can require that they put in additional uh, landscaping. Uh, you can also impose the uh, fee that's related that was adopted as part of the ordinance uh, and you'll see in the report that that uh, is about uh, $200 per inch um, of deciduous tree that's not being replaced and $200 uh, a foot for uh, the evergreen trees that are not being replaced. Uh, that's estimated and reported about $12,000. I think the email that was received from the uh, architect uh, for this project uh, indicated that that was creating an issue in terms of the fee. Uh, and I'll let them explain or get into uh, that. But those are your options in terms of the landscape plan. I would also point out that the landscape, um, there have been other trees removed along that island in the past. Uh, and I would ask the planning commission to direct staff on how you want us to deal with those versus the prior plan, uh, site plan that was approved and uh, uh, what's out there. But with that, that's the special land use report. Um, I think we can get into a discussion of the special land use, whether you want to allow the expansion 
of, of the outside service area should be your first action. And then secondly, we can discuss the site plan uh, and the uh, provisions related to it. All right, I uh, will take that up. I think that uh, sounds good. We'll talk about the special land use first. And I see that uh, Mr. Rellinger and uh, Ms. Flores are both here. If you could uh, introduce yourself for the record uh, and uh, tell us about your, your project. Uh, Camilla, you're muted. Hi, Harold. <laughs> Do you want to go, you want to introduce yourself? Go ahead and introduce I'll yourself go. first as the owner and everything. Okay. Hi, I'm Camelia Flores, owner of Camelia's Mexican Grill. Um, legal name is Mexarachi LLC. And um, we've had this dream for a long time to try to um, open up the front um, with, I guess they're called like garage doors and um, you know, we want to be like it is on Main Street. We want to be competitive and, you know, help this 11-mile uh, corridor um, look nice. I think that was the plan that the city had um, a while back. Um, it's been tough with COVID and everything. Um, but, you know, after speaking with Harold, I think we both agree that this is a great idea since... Um, people are wanting to dine out more um, with the situation going on. So we're here tonight. Hopefully we can um, make this dream come true and, you know, help our business um, get back to where it needs to be. Um, you know, COVID has had a, a big uh, setback for us, but, you know, we're hanging in there. So I'll let Harold introduce himself and he's got, um, he's been working on this plan with me for a long time and hopefully he can explain a lot more better. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Harold Rumlinger, Design Team Plus uh, 975 uh, East Maple, Birmingham, Michigan. Uh, we're the architects of record. Um, you know, thank you for the introduction and the description of the project, Tim. Um, and that was uh, uh, very well put. Uh, you know, granted, yes, we're, we're looking on doing about 210 square feet of outdoor seating along the north side of Camellia's Mexican Grill facing 11 Mile Road. Uh, the plan is to put two overhead garage doors as well as a service door leading to a, a, an enclosed, not enclosed, but a, a, a gated in area, six feet deep, approximately 35 feet long on our property um, along the, the sidewalk area. Uh, we do meet all the requirements for parking, restrooms. Um, you know, in regards to the uh, planning division um, report that we received, uh, the first one with the seven items, you know, the petitioner um, has already gone before city council. We have already received approval from city council on March 18th for the increase of occupancy as well as business plan for the change in the liquor license to allow the or outdoor seating. Um, we received notice that they are just waiting for us to call for inspection when it's ready to go. Uh, in regards to item number two in the landscape, um, we'll discuss that a little bit later uh, when we start talking about the, the, uh, the other um, staff report. Um, we do understand that we do need to have all permits in place, um, you know, especially with the engineering department, since the sidewalk will need to be blocked off to allow work to proceed at the front of that building. All existing site lighting is to remain. We did not propose adding or changing any of the site lighting. Um, we will be discussing the signage and a signage variance, which is the next item on the agenda. Uh, we do understand that a bond must be posted by the general contractor who is selected for the projects. And then again, all permits will be applied for. Um, I have already contacted the engineering department regarding the stormwater detention lead. And we understand that that is just an application that needs to be filed with the engineering department prior to any building permits being provided to us to move forward with the project. Um, in regards to the, the other staff report and especially in regards to the landscaping, um, you know, currently we have two trees which are located along the east driveway. One that is up against the, uh, the 
chicken shack building and then the other one that is on the west side of that east um, uh, entry point into the site. The, the tree that was adjacent to or abutting the chicken shack was damaged due to an act of God. The tree was topped. Uh, we included pictures of it and the date in which those pictures were taken within our site plan report. Um, and we would, you know, request that the planning commission grant us a one-to-one -one replacement on that tree due to the fact that it was damaged prior to, um, you know, by an act of God and while the building was actually under a different ownership. So we would request that we can replace that one at a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, as Co uh, Camilla had mentioned, you know, Due to COVID, times have been a bit tight. You know, we understand that there's been many restrictions put in place. And along with that, the cost of replacing tree and the calculated $12,000, which has been calculated for the tree fund, um, we will have to decide to possibly remove um, the replacement of the existing Austrian pines, which are the three tall evergreens on the berm along Blair. We request that the, the tree damage, as I mentioned, due to the act of God is being replaced at a one-to-one -one ratio. And then under the section of 770-9 subsection K, the replacement of the tree on the west side of the Easterly Drive, um, we would like to plant um, additional deciduous trees along the berm, and as well as replace the tree that's there in that little landscape island next to the driveway. We have room on that berm that we could probably place a couple six foot tall evergreens along the rear property line, which is a south property line to shield and provide, you know, a, a screen to the neighbors to be conscious of the neighbors to our south, as well as I think there's room for two Columber style Armstrong maples that could be placed on that island. And then the replacement of those Austrian pines will have to be determined based on revenue um, in the post-COVID world uh, as we move forward um, and, and people start coming to come out and the numbers are going down and we can get back to hopefully a real world situation. Um, the other option, we would respectfully request that the Planning Commission approve what the proposed landscape plan was on the drawings, but if not, I would like to um, at least have that alternate approach, which I just mentioned in the beginning. Uh, also in the, the report that was presented, um, I understand that underneath these item seven recommendations, there's a basis of determination that has to be um, looked upon in, in granting this approval. And item number one, uh, which is, you know, will be harmonious with the accordance to the general objectives and specific in the master plan. You know, per the current zoning ordinance, it's, it's, you know, the existing use and proposed outdoor cafe is acceptable, is acceptable with the special land use approval um, and will be harmonious with also accordance to the master plan under the proposed mixed use residential office commercial since the master plan for this land um, with its recommended use also states allowing local commercial uses with special land use approval. So I don't see that there's really any change or any um, major decision that needs to be made there because even the new master plan allows existing, allowing local commercial uses to remain. Um, item number two, will the design construct, constructed, operate and maintained um, so as to be harmonious with the appropriate and appearance with the existing intent of the character in the general vicinity? Yes, the design with that intent um, to meet, you know, all the current zoning ordinances, which we have demonstrated in our plan for the facades of the building. There will be no change to the intended character of the general vicinity since this is not a change of use and it is currently operating restaurant. And it is actually harmonious since the adjacent property is a similar use as well as a restaurant. Um, item three in that, uh, will there be hazardous or disruption to the existing use? For uses, you know, reasonably anticipated in the future, um, to demonstrate this, that the addition of the outdoor seating will not be hazardous to the existing use. We've reviewed the Institute of Transportation Engineers Common Trip Generator, and have concluded, per the ITC Manual 10th Edition, under the current master plan with the proposed mixed-use residential commercial office um, does, zoning designation 
it is possible that you could have two dwelling units on a second floor, plus possibly a pharmaceutical business on the first floor, which would aid to the community. Um, I will call this worst case scenario. And per that document, the generation of traffic would be about 8.5 trips per hour per day. Per the current use as Camila's Mexican Grill, the ITC manual shows a lesser traffic count calculated only at 7.8 trips per day. Therefore, the current use is lesser of an impact on the surrounding area than what could be built there in the future under the proposed zoning use. So again, this will not be hazardous. Um, and again, it is an existing business that has been functioning there for over 10 years and has not caused a hazard to the neighborhood. Item number four, will it be improved in relationship to the property um, in, in the immediate vicinity of the city as a whole? You know, this will be an improvement to the city um, and the surrounding area, uh, the updating of the building facade, as well as providing local business and services as a restaurant to the near, nearest by established residential district, providing those residents with a venue within walking distance that they can partake at and also experience the same thing they could do in your downtown district. And therefore, it would reduce possible congestion and traffic within your growing downtown by keeping those residents close to home, as well as being able to walk. So it's healthy for them as well. Item number five uh, will be served adequately by essential and public services. Again, this is an existing building. All essential public services will continue and will be maintained. We do not see any change or disruption in that. Um, item number six, will not create excessive additional public costs. Again, um, since this is an existing building and it's an existing use and it's not a change of use, we do not foresee any additional public costs that will be increased due to the renovations to the building. And then will it be consistent with the intent and purpose of the chapter of the zoning or uh, complying to the ethical provisions and standards? We feel that we have met those standards um, with the question of the landscaping, which we propose an alternative to. We will meet all the current building codes that are needed to be adhered to. We will submit for all the permits that will needed to be adhered to and feel that we also have met this requirement. At this point in time, I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions um, that you might have in regards to our proposal and site plan. Thank you. All right, are there questions for the petitioner or the architect? All right, well, I have a couple. Um, just explain, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Douglas, go ahead. Well, yeah, I don't actually, I don't have a question, but. Um, I can, I think I can count on the fingers of one hand, the number of applicants who come to us for a special land use and don't address the, the basis of determination points that you have, have addressed. And I just want to thank you for your thoroughness. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. So noted. Um, all right. For, this is a, a, for the architect. So I was out there today. I took a look at it, but just so I understand what you're doing here, the, the space that is going to be created, how, how it's like six foot wide, is that correct. correct? Yes. So you have one row of tables, you're going to uh, open up a couple of these uh, rolling doors, right? Correct. Is there a man door in here or how are you going to? There, there is a man door also that goes out there. So when weather is inclement, if you take a look at the front elevation to the right of the front elevation, you'll see there's a single aluminum storefront man door that leads out to the terrace. So that way the garage doors can remain shut. People can still stay, sit, stay on the street and it can be serviced from the inside without having the, the overhead doors open. And the width of the sidewalk here, how, how wide is that? It didn't seem very wide when I was I, I think when I measured it, it's greater than five feet because it goes from back a curb to the property line. So it is, is greater than a standard five foot sidewalk at that location. All right. Um, did you, you know, not to critique here, but I, I and I, I wondered, it's the traffic there is going by at 35 miles an hour. Did you consider swinging this uh, facility to the east or the west or, or not? The, the, the problem with moving to the east or west, we're going to then lose parking. And at that point, we won't meet the requirements for the parking. So right. the, the reason why we kept it to the north, I had conversations with uh, Joseph Murphy on this prior to us submitting. 
um, and, and review the plan with him uh, in, in brief discussions. But if we were to swing it to the west, we would block our egress and ingress um, into, the pro into the parking lot because it's a, a two-way lane with only one row of parking. If we swung it to the east, we would then be eliminating existing parking, possibly putting us below the required amount of parking that we need on site. So that's why we kept it at the front. Okay. It was a practical decision. It's a practical decision. I do know that you know there's approximately 8,807 uh, um, trips on 11 Mile Road per you know per day, um, according to SEMCOG. And when I took a look at it, um, and I think you know when you look at it, it's like 300 and some vehicles per hour going by there. And then Camilla, what is your hours of operation? Um. Monday through Friday, we're only open from three to, well, Monday through Thursday, we're open from four to nine, Friday from four to 10, and Saturday and Sunday, we're open from noon to, to 10 on Saturday until nine on Sunday. So um, yeah, we've always just opened up during the afternoon, um, Monday through Thursday, um, but Prior to COVID, we were open all day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But since most businesses are, are not operating right now, um, we're just open PM during the week. Thank you. All right. How late open into the evening, did you say? Uh, nine o'clock. Uh, nine nine o'clock Monday through Thursday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday till 10, no, Friday and Saturday till 10, Sunday till nine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, other questions for the petitioner, Ms. Beakey. I guess this is a follow-up to your question and just a point of orientation and, and maybe to the petitioner or maybe to Tim. Um, is it mandatory to have those two-way driveways on both sides of the building? I had the same thought as you did, Gary, when I went out there. Why wouldn't, if you're going to add outdoor, why wouldn't it be on the side, um, especially the, um, or it's, uh, the east side where you already have that berm and buffer so I'm just curious about the driveway requirements. Um, a 90, <clears throat> excuse me, a 90 degree parking. Yes, it's required to be the width it is. You need, you need to be able to go both directions. Um, so based on the design, yes, they're, they're required to be that width. And, you know, and it's required to be on both sides of the building as well? I don't know how you would uh, access the parking if you didn't have driveways on both sides of the building. I mean, of that width, they couldn't be like a one way. Anyway, I was just curious. Okay, so that's, it's required. And I guess the other question I have is, is with regard to the, the, um, the various trees, unless we're gonna discuss that at a different point, I, I saw that one of the pine trees looks, looks had, has had some kind of um, maybe infestation or something, but, but considering that berm and considering the maturity of the trees and their height, et cetera, and, and if that's, if the purpose of the berm is for privacy and for um, buffering of the traffic, et cetera, did you consider just adding trees, making it actually a thicker, rather than taking some out and putting some in? Well, and that is what our alternative proposal will be doing. We would be leaving the Alstream, three Alstream pines on site in the location when they're at. We would then replace the two trees at the east driveway. And then I would propose possibly putting an additional three the four trees on that berm, a couple of pine trees, um, kind of like they're shown in the, the in the site plan adjacent to the south property line um, and the neighbors uh, behind us to kind of shield that. And then there is room that we could possibly fit two more deciduous trees, one towards 11 Mile Road, and then also one near the rear property line where there was a tree previously removed at some time prior to uh, Camilla being in that space and location. <clears throat> am, I right. able, am I able to share that the plan by chance or? Um, if you have it, I think you can, if uh, Ms. Schwanger can uh, permit you to, to share the screen. All set. Okay, I think you can do it. I'm doing it. So, okay, so we can see the, uh, the, the plan here up in front, um, you know, we are obviously this tree here is the one that's photographed down below, which you can see has been topped um, at some point in time. 
Uh, this is a tree uh, that we're looking on replacing. We can easily place these two evergreens in this location. We probably have room for a columbar, like Armstrong maple in this location, as well as we have room that we can do a columbar Armstrong maple in this area. Because of the size and the, the diameter of these trees, planting anything underneath it would be growing up into the actual branch structure of those trees, so that wouldn't work. However, because there was a tree that was lost up front and a tree that was lost at some time at the back, it does give us room that we can add a couple of trees in those locations. So there is the possibility that we would be able to replace, replace, add one, two, three, four trees on that berm, creating a little bit denser screen. Um, there is no residential across from us. So again, the, the berm is there shielding from the street, but not shielding from a, a non-similar um, you know, use. All right, Ms. Beaky. Um, a, a different question. Um, we did get some concerns from some of the neighbors about noise and, and the outdoor dining. Um, and, and they've experienced already having, I guess there's sometimes temporary permits to have parties or some kind of dining outside that they've uh, noticed before. I wonder if you've had an opportunity to speak to any of the neighbors, that's one question. And related to the issue of, of parking versus using the parking lot differently, um, do you have any sense of the percentage of people who do walk from the neighborhood or bike to the restaurant versus come by car? Again, this is meant to be a neighborhood business area. And even if it were to switch to mixed use, um, an area in which we would want to encourage people to walk there and to bike there rather than coming from long distances. And I wonder if there's any information on the mix um, to that effect. I do not have any, and SimCog does not have any studies on that. I don't know if uh, Camellia has done any surveys of the neighborhoods that have, um, you know, the people have walked to it. Regardless whether they walk or they don't walk, we still have the requirements of the zoning ordinance with the requirements of how much parking is going to need to be provided on the site. So um, that would just be an added bonus. And then I'll let Camelia respond to the question regarding noise, um, because I do not have uh, any familiarity as to if parties were being held outside or anything like that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Carol, can you take the plan down so we can see everybody? Thank you. Hi. Um, we've never had any complaints from uh, the residential, um, the people that live around there. We've never had anyone come in. Uh, we didn't know, you know, um, so there's really nothing I can say about that. But we haven't, the only time we've had um, outdoor events is every year Cinco de Mayo. That's the only time that um, we've ever had. We that The only events that we have. Um, and I think... With the patio uh, going in the front, I think that's, you know, that's going to take away um, from people being closer to the neighbors, you know, it's going to be more in the front, but we don't plan on having loud music or anything like that. Um, so, but honestly, we've never had any neighbors complain to us and we've never had the city tell us anything about any kind of complaints. So this is the first I'm hearing of it. And, and to go along with what Camelia just said, you know, with it being on the north side of the building adjacent to 11 Mile Road, traffic on 11 Mile Road is going to be louder going by than what people are talking, 10 people Absolutely. at the front. So, yeah. um, I, I don't foresee that being an issue or a problem. All right, thank you. Um, I think that maybe we haven't, uh, I, I think I forgot to ask for the public comment. Uh, Ms. Schwanger, did you say that there was a public comment on this item? There was no public comment on this item. Oh, okay, I, I may have missed it. There, there are two emails that are attached to the end of the report. There are, that are there for everyone's consumption and ability to read. Uh, so we did get public comments, and they are at the end of the the uh, uh, staff report. So. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, so at this point, uh, I'd like to bring the discussion. Uh, if there's no more questions for the petitioners, back to this uh, 
commission side of the table. And I'd also like to clarify procedurally, um, you've, Tim, you've got these uh, site plan and special land use together, but I think uh, I, would, I would suggest we discuss the, the special land use and then go more fully to the site plan uh, if that's okay with everybody. So that's, that's would, normal. That's the normal procedure to do the special land use first and then do the site plan. All right, thank you. So let's uh, bring it back here. Is, is there discussion regarding the special land use uh, request uh, discussion or, or a motion from the panel? I will move to approve the special land use. Is there a second? Mr. Gantina seconds. Yep. Is there further discussion of the special land use? Seeing none, um, I will call for the vote. Now this is the special land use to expand the uh, uh, alcohol sales and to uh, operate the outdoor cafe. I think those are the two issues there. Um, all right, so I will call for the vote. Mr. Curtis. Aye. Mr. Gantina. Yes. Ms. Beakey. Yes. Commissioner Douglas. Yes. Mr. Mayor. Aye. Mr. Kluster. Yes. And I'm a yes. So the special uh, land use request is approved and we can move on to the uh, issue of the site plan. Uh, Mr. Twing, you already mentioned some aspects of this. Is there anything you wanna add at this point? Um, well, just briefly to highlight the report, there really are uh, uh, two items. The first one is in relation to the amended plan of operation, which has been approved by the city commission. Uh, there is a link if you went into the report, so you could have read that if, or, or the public could read that as well as, as the plan of operation. It was approved by the city commission. Um, it, does, it does allow for uh, piped or canned music to be played in the outside area uh, that's proposed on the north side. It includes a provision that allows the police department to request that it be turned down or turned off if it's uh, loud, but it, it does uh, under their plan of operation allow for canned or piped music to be outside. Uh, so that was item one uh, and, it, and it just simply references that as uh, uh, having to comply with uh, uh, those provisions, uh, rather than listing several provisions here, it might be separate. Item two is the related to the landscaping. And again, as we discussed, you're, you have options. Uh, you have the option to approve the plan as submitted, uh, approve the plan um, uh, with additional uh, landscaping uh, that you might indicate uh, to mitigate any concerns or site plan issues you may have, uh, as well as impose the uh, fee uh, that's required under the ordinance, that's mentioned under the ordinance that you have an option to, or you could consider other options. So uh, this really is kind of in your court to decide which direction you'd like to go. But there is, there is a plan in front of you. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, let's uh, go back to the petitioner. I would, I know you had the plan up there, but we, we have the plan here. You, I guess I, have, I do have a question for you, Tim. The, the trees that are on the north side of the property, um, they're more like bushes, are those part of the, the equation? No, we, we are not counting shrubs and we don't count arborvitaes. Uh, we're simply counting true evergreen trees, uh, the pines, the spruces, uh, and then the deciduous trees. But no, the, the arborvitaes and the other uh, plants that are on the north side are all being removed and replaced with the outside cafe. And those do not count into uh, the shortfall. All right, and I guess I, I have another uh, question then. You know, one of the three uh, pine trees does look like it's in rough shape. And um, I think I raised this question before because one of the petitioners uh, suggested that uh, they took a dead tree down. Of course, we don't know if they did or not. But at, at this point, you can see the one tree is not in good shape. I think the, the point of the, the tree ordinance is multi, uh, 
multifold, but uh, certainly uh, we want to keep the trees. We want to replace the trees. Uh, we want to improve the tree situation. So um, is there something in the ordinance that addresses when a tree is uh, either dying or dead and how does that factor into the equation? Uh, well, if it's dead and it's clearly dead, we would probably not include it. Uh, if it's a question of, or subjective question as to what shape it is, uh, staff, if it's alive and living, is gonna count it in, in the requirement. Um, none of us are horticulturists, um, so we're not making evaluations as to uh, whether it's gonna live another six months or another five years. Um, so I, I think that there is nothing in the ordinance that, I mean, it does talk about the conditions of the trees. Uh, so have you evaluated and thought some were in poorer condition than others had outgrown or were detrimental, I think it has your discretion as the planning commission to decide those trees either don't need to be replaced or the tree doesn't need to be replaced or that it can be replaced at a lower threshold. So the way it's written is you've got a lot of discretion to decide uh, where to go with this. All right, uh, Commissioner Douglas had her hand up first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so Mr. Twing, uh, let us say that we approved this um, um, plan, with, with the, and I'm talking particularly about the landscaping here, and they decided not to go forward with it at this time. Um, and then let us say two years from now, they decide they wanna re-landscape it in an entirely different way. Um, as Mr. Remlinger has suggested, retaining the existing trees, just doing some different things. Do they need to submit a revised site plan for that different landscaping? Uh, generally, I would say yes. I mean, it's hard to speculate on something that may or may not occur in the future. Uh, but if you're modifying a site plan, uh, you are required to submit those revisions. It may be dealt with administratively. If they're not taking away trees, they're simply adding trees, we would probably not bring that to the Planning Commission for consideration and simply deal with it administratively. If they were taking elements away and not fully replacing it, we would probably bring it back to the Planning Commission for its evaluation. So two possibilities here are we either let them retain the landscaping plan they have proposed and say that if they do that, they'll have to pay the tree penalty, or we um, recommend that they submit a revised site plan, leaving that landscaping along the west side the way that it is, and then at some future day, they can re-landscape it if they wish. Those, those two possible options. Um, well, again, if if they're planned to re to landscape it in, if you, if you approve the plan, the modified plan, without removing any trees, um, then if they were to in the future add landscaping, they could do so. If they were taking trees away in the future then they'd have to address the ordinance provision. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, Mr. Gantina had his hand up as well. Yep, so uh, I just had another question for Mr. Twing. The, the tree at the northeast corner, um, they provided a photo of, of the damaged tree and at, at least the 2015 photo essentially looks like what remains is just the trunk of the tree, really no foliage. That was counted as a tree uh, an existing tree in the calculation. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, if, and simply if it, if it weren't counted in the uh, calculation, it simply lowers the two to one ratio to where I believe they're remo removing five, which means 10 would need to go back in. Uh, does that number change to nine at that point? If that tree was not considered in the, as an existing might tree? Might, might change to eight, but, or, okay. or one to one, uh, but. Um, and then you've got the inch provision as well. Right, that's, so I was gonna get to that in a second. Um, so, okay, so, cause that, that tree's obvi very obviously damaged. Um, certainly the health of it could be subjective, but I would barely consider it a tree uh, based on what's being shown. 
um, so they, they would meet the, the replacement ratio in that respect. Um, I do have a question for the applicant in terms of whether or not the ability to add a tree in the landscape berm um, just north of their dumpster area, if there's the possibility to put a tree there. Um, I'm not sure if that island is large enough, but it looks to be about the same size as the other landscape islands. That's in the parking lot? Yes. yes. Oh, we. what we wanted to do with that is just uh, add, that should have been a parking space actually. So. Um, oh, it's, it's not actually a landscape island. Right, no, no. So we do have um, a bid, um, have bids coming in for the parking lot right now, but I want that to be um, at, you know, cleared out and put asphalt on it. So it's gonna be an additional parking space. And is that parking space then, would that be needed to meet the ordinance or that just would be additional parking? That, that would just be additional. Okay. Uh, okay, that's all I have for right now. Um, I would just make a comment that um, I think that uh, Mr. Mr. Gontina, I think there's a document here from Noah and Frost, which may be the historic uh, Pizza Hut. Uh, uh, and I think they did have a tree there before. But... Oh, they did? Okay, that had to be a long time ago. Yeah. Um, other, other questions, Ms. Beakey? Um, related to that, that point about the tree that was previously there and also, again, the permeable versus impermeable surfaces, I thought in our ordinance also for per certain number of parking spaces, there's supposed to be trees in the parking lot. Um, and also if I know it's a small green space in the front and I understand both under neighborhood business and under mixed use, that's allowed to take that space over and, and, and put the uh, patio as their suggestion. Um, but I'm just wondering about the, but, but the number of trees per the overall site um, with regard to the parking, isn't it one per 10 spaces or something like that or am I, or am I missing something. I guess that's for you, Tim. We the question for Mr. Twain. Mm -hmm. um, I'd have to go back and look at the ratio on it. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head, but I could, I can probably look real quick, but. Um, I guess a related point to that is that there had been a tree there and, and if that parking lot is supposed to have trees, I think it'd be preferable to put a tree there than to um, pave that if that's something we can comment on. And just a general comment, um, because you do meet the parking requirement, I don't know if you've considered putting some bike parking somewhere in your parking lot. When I was there today, I saw a couple bikes even just parked behind the building um, without a bike rack or anywhere a place to be. Um, that's just a general uh, comment for your consideration. Okay. Other comments or questions for the petitioner? Plural, petitioners. Um, I, I just have a clarification. I want to make sure this is clear as I look at this. You, there are five trees out there right now. Three of them are pine trees, one of which is in bad shape. There are two deciduous trees, one of them that suffered damage. You have five trees, two of them are damaged. And that your site plan would propose to put nine trees in. You would take all, the, all five of the existing trees out and put nine new trees in. That's what you're proposing, yes? Correct. All right. And but if I understand correctly from the report, that's gonna cost you $12,000 to do that. And that's giving you hesitation. That would cost us an additional $12,000. So not only would we have to put the trees in, um, I think the report said we needed to add 13 additional trees plus pay $12,000 if I'm not mistaken on that. All right. Plus four. Uh, did you have a comment? Commissioner Douglas, did you have a comment? Funny, funny I, I wasn't muted, but I, I don't think it's a, I think it's an either or. Either you um, replace the trees to a, a certain quantity or you pay uh, um, uh, into the tree fund, right, Mr. Twain? Yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, it, you've, got a, you've got a shortfall in the report with the trees that are, are being replaced um, of, well, let me find it here real quick. Uh, trees, if I'm not mistaken. 50, it's about 52 feet of height that's not being replaced under the plan, or it's uh, what, 20, 24 inches, I believe. No, um, 
it's based on the number of inches and things. It's not, it's not in addition to, it's, it's a, a separate activity or a separate requirement. Yes, just to be clear, if this plan was accepted and the, uh, the option for the fee was in, imposed, that would be $12,000, but they also could add trees, correct? Well, you, uh, you could require them to add trees and rather than the fee, you could require that the plans fine and impose the fee. Um, can, can you clarify, is it a total really falls to what you want to do in terms of the review of the site plan? Um, they are requesting that you not impose the fee is my understanding. Yeah, and, or, or the 13 trees is the other one. Okay. Well, Ms. B you're, you're muted. Sorry about that. I thought the fee was in addition to the trees they proposed because the trees they proposed do not, uh, cumulative do, do not equal the height and the mass of the current trees because you have some quite relatively right. mature trees. So, so it is a, at this point, they would put some trees in and there's a fee. If they could plant, I don't know, however many additional trees of certain size you could get rid of the fee, but I understand the fee is required in addition to the trees they propose. Yeah. Even if you thought, them down. Only if you impose it, you can waive it. You don't have to. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I, and, and Ms. Biggie, that's really the intent of the um, ordinance for the city um, was to establish, um, to make sure that, I mean, we've had a couple incidences and this isn't, you know, the rules apply to everybody, of course, in this case, but, you know, it was really to prevent against people cutting down 500 year old oak trees and putting up literally a sapling this big, you know, two of them, because they wanted to, you know, add more space for whatever commercial reasons and thing like that. And, you know, of course, has a devastating impact on our community, both in terms of aesthetics, but stormwater runoff and all these other things that all the benefits trees bring. So I think you're right in the intent here. Um, it would be interesting to me is, you know, what, what does this look like? And I think someone was hinting at it, or maybe I missed the, the exact dialogue with some buzzing going on on my, my speakers here. But, um, you know, if you take out the, the tree that's dying and you take out the trees that were there prior to the current operator, you know, the ones that I see, if you look, it looks like there's a pretty, you know, girth one, you know, has a lot of girth in it that was removed closer to 11 mile. Um, does that go from you know, 12,000 to 5,000 bucks. I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, it'd be interesting to know if that calculation is more tolerable. And then within that dollar amount, is there wiggle room there uh, from the commission to adjust for the merits of the situation? So, um, I mean, we don't, we definitely, so the petitioner understands, we definitely, you know, appreciate the investment. We appreciate um, trees and, and or, or the landscaping plan, but we, the, the reason the intent behind this ordinance is to preserve the canopy in the city for a whole number of reasons and which i am sure you can imagine you can understand we it, you have good intentions but not everyone some people like to slash and burn and then plant little saplings that will eventually dry up and everything's fine so um well uh, can i yeah. maybe you know i mean it, it's it seems like this is um a big issue here um you know right now we, you know, this is going to be an expensive project for us to do this. I mean, you know, it, and because, you know, because of COVID, it's been hard. Mm -hmm. So I can't, you know, I mean, this is just, you know, for us to have to pay to, because we want to do something with the landscaping, let's just leave it as it is then. And we'll, you know, I, we don't mind adding some trees in there, you know, additional trees. But to have to pay twelve thousand dollars or even five thousand, it still takes away from the budget to do the project. You know, um, it's that's. I would prefer just to leave that alone. You know, maybe at some different time. You know, maybe we can afford to do something at another time. But right now, we're trying to. We're still getting bids on. You know, trying to find. Um, you know, the company to, uh, to do this project that's not going to, you know, be crazy, a, a crazy amount of money. 
So thank you. With all due respect, like we, you know, this is our property now and we want it to look beautiful, you know, whatever it takes. There's, you know, the reason, the only reason why I brought this in um, these trees, I brought the trees up is because they look pretty bad, you know. Um, I didn't even realize that they, you know, um, calculate how tall they are that we, you know, to that in the equation of how to replace them. I mean, that never, you know, my thought was, okay, we take these. I hate to, I love trees myself. My whole property at home has trees, but, you know, and I hate to tear down and cut down a tree that's still a beautiful tree, but we, these trees look pretty bad. And this is the only reason why I brought, we brought this up, but okay. if it's going to be an issue. I, I think we get the point. Thank you. And uh, Commissioner Douglas would like to make a comment. So, so the purpose of the tree ordinance is because big mature trees um, cleanse the air, conserve water, and pr protect our environment. So if you were to leave those mature trees there, even if they look scraggly, they're still great big trees doing what trees are do, which we value, and you would still be serving the community by protecting those larger trees. Um, so, I mean, to me, this is a win-win. I mean, you don't have to pay anything. You're not going to cut anything down, so there's no cost to you. And again, yeah. So at some future point, you want to add some landscaping or shrubs or other trees along the west side. Awesome. That's fine with me. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I will say when we get around to a motion here, I'm going to be inclined to let you remove that um, damaged tree on the far east side with no penalty. Thank you. I appreciate that. Ms. Beaky. Just a quick comment related to this discussion. Um, I think it's a good discussion and I'm glad to see that the tree ordinance as it has gone through a long process of reading and putting put into place is, is having its intended effect was to ask, to have people to pause to think before they would remove and give us some option to, to discuss the mature trees. And um, I would hope we would look at um, putting some more things in place like that for, for other uh, city projects. Um, and, and also I was out there today and quite honestly, I do think those trees look quite beautiful and I think they're a good buffer um, on that busy street. Um. Okay. All right, other uh, comments from the panel um, or discussion on this issue? Um, I guess I have a comment. I, I was uh, disturbed uh, a little bit from the get go. I understand uh, uh, Commissioner Douglas's point. Uh, I think it's a good point. But I wonder, you know, trees grow, they get big, they get sick, they die. You have to put another one in and they grow again. Um, I'm not a horticulturist either, but I am wary of uh, a, a, a application of the ordinance that acts as a disincentive for people to improve their property with new trees. Um, here we have a, a petitioner who uh, would have increased the number of trees. Now the, the downside is a couple of those trees are large trees, as Commissioner Douglas points out. Um, I, think that, I think that for myself, I want to be very uh, careful not to, not to take a, a good intended rule and, and end up having it create a disincentive. So myself, I'm going to be uh, inclined to approve the site plan and not impose the fees and um, and I think I think the plan is an improvement. But if we're going to keep the old trees and the petitioner is going to add trees, that's fine too. Uh, but I'm 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 seeing this as a as a as a problem with the ordinance of dis, uh, creating a disincentive to improve. That's my position. That's my comment. Thank At you. least in this instance. Thank you, uh, Mr. Curtis. Yeah, just in response, I appreciate your perspective on that. And I, I, uh, <clears throat> I guess it hinges on the definition of improve, right? So one person's improvement is another person's catastrophe, possibly, and in, in how you understand improvement. But I do appreciate your perspective that uh, we, we put that there as a city to protect our canopy, not to disincentivize uh, improvements. So, um, but I guess my two cents, and if we're starting to 
move towards motion. I don't have it formulated in my head, but my two cents is along the lines of uh, what uh, Commissioner Douglas was saying. The damaged one to the east, let's have a one-to-one replacement. I mean, it need, needs something there <laughs> uh, and, and see what we can do to preserve as much canopy as possible without, um, you know, imposing uh, upon the petitioner uh, something that would stop them from moving ahead. Excited about the project, by the way, looking forward to more. I, I enjoy all this outdoor dining that COVID has <laughs> sort of forced us into. So I'm happy to come have a little something to eat at the new space when it's ready. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, you mentioned a, a motion. Is there a motion, Mr. Gantina? You have a comment. Yeah, I just wanted to state that uh, I, I sort of agree with you, Mr. Casada, in terms of um, I, I certainly don't want the ordinance to be a disincentive for um, improvements or, or uh, positive decisions in terms of, of tree planting. Certainly, it'd be preferable to not cut anything down. Uh, but I do believe the applicant in this case is making a uh, concerted effort to um, clean up uh, uh, trees that are potentially maybe not healthy or uh, maybe not doing the job that we want them to do, but then replace those and add additional trees that, you know, if maintained correctly, will, will grow up nice and healthy and, and do the same job. Um, I would, however, uh, be inclined to approve this site plan as is waiving the, the $12,000 fee, because I do think in this case, it does seem a little onerous considering what the applicant is proposing. But I would request that the landscape island uh, to the north of the, um, the trash area, if it is in fact still existing today, that it not be removed for a parking place and a tree be added to that location. Is, is, is that a comment or a motion? Uh, it, it's, I guess, more of a comment of uh, sort of how I feel about things and what I would support um, because that tree doesn't exist in that landscape berm. Um, it would need to be a part of a motion. And I'm just, again, not ready to make a motion yet. Okay. And I will just say I was out there today and there is, there, that spot is grass. There's no tree in it, but there's grass there. Yes. I never, like I said, I never knew there was a tree there. Um, Honestly, I, I never even thought about it. Should I put a tree there? <laughs> but it, it wouldn't be a problem to put a tree there, honestly. All right, thank you. Other, you other comments on our side of the table or uh, formulation of a motion? I think we've had a pretty good discussion here. It probably won't be the last time we'll have this sort of discussion on, on the tree ordinance. So we're just getting warmed up. We've only had it a couple of times. <laughs> no. Mr. Kluster, you, you unmuted yourself. I will make a motion to approve the site plan as is with the landscaping plan as is or alternatively not removing any trees and, and staying as is. Um, the caveat that no fee be applied to trees that are found to be in poor or unhealthy condition. All right, I'm gonna to have to uh, ask you to clarify this now. And Mr. Twing, I wanna know if you can have uh, such a motion that in the alternative, you know, we lawyers do that, but I don't know if uh, planning commissioners can do that. Mr. Twing. Uh, did you get support for it? Did you get support for the motion? Uh, is there a second for the motion by Mr. Kluster? Could he ex expand on it a little bit? I'm not quite sure I have a picture of his intention. So there are two options. The landscape plan as designed in the set that we have in front of us would be approved with no fees being applied to the trees that are found to be damaged or unhealthy. The alternative is the landscape 
as it is today on the site could remain. With no change. With no change, no removal of any trees. Okay. Who would decide if they were healthy? Uh, I believe we had uh, on, on staff and we have a arborist that has recommended. Yeah, we have a city arborist. So would you incorporate that in your motion? Yes, to clarify the motion, trees determined to be in good health by the city arborist. All right. Um, I still think we need a little clarification on here because you, let, me, let me ask this question. Well, nobody seconded it yet. I, I think I know where Mr. Twing's going and nobody seconds it. We don't have to deal with it, but uh, absolutely, uh, <laughs> it seems to me that um, this the second uh, part of that, uh, that the petitioner do nothing with the landscape, um, that would be, um, well, I I guess they've submitted a landscape plan and we have to say thumbs up or thumbs down or amended or, or put conditions on, I should say. So I suppose, uh, I suppose that is, uh, that's a valid, valid approach there. All right, is there a second for this motion? All right, I do not see a second. So as creative as it was, we don't have to face the difficulties with it. Is there another formulation of a motion for this, uh, for this panel? Ms. Beakey? I have a question, not necessarily a formulation. C can we, for, in improving the site plan, request a revised landscaping plan uh, or, or say that we'd like that landscaping plan revised per this discussion to, to retain the two um, pines that are in good shape, decent shape, consider whether or not the, the even the pine that looks distressed, whether it could stay there and then having um, the addition of the other deciduous trees as was discussed at the beginning and the removal of the tree on the east as was requested and then have the replacement. Can we ask for a revised landscaping plan as part of this discussion or no? Uh, if you want to see a revised landscape plan before you act on it, you can postpone it until you get one. Uh, yeah. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I think what I'm understanding here, and I think what Mr. Kluster was attempting to do, was basically say, you know, we can accept the plan as it is today with the fees, but adjust those fees based on not accounting for trees that are dead or unhealthy or really shouldn't be counted in the equation by some criteria as um, determined by a city arborist. Or alternatively, as the petitioner suggested um, as an option, uh, and I think some other commissioners, we just go ahead and leave everything the same as far as the site plan. The trees remain there. If they want to plant extra tree, then of course they don't have to come to us if they're going to add trees. Um, if they're going to do a little creativity with the landscaping there, as long as they're not cutting down trees, it's fine. Um, and if they decide in the future that they want to make changes, cut down those trees and put something in differently, and they can come back and come for a new site plan uh, change. So I think really what it does is it gives the option for the petitioner to do nothing essentially, or to, you know, move forward with the plan with an adjusted fee schedule that reflects the fact that there are some dead trees there and trees that, you know, were down before the petitioner, you know, took possession of the property. To me, that seems pretty equitable. It gives a couple options. Um, you know, I, I think uh, now that it, it took me a minute to process it, but I think I don't, I mean, this is a pretty simple thing that the petitioner, they came to the planning commission. We've been talking about it for an hour and 10 minutes. They came to get some outdoor dining during a pandemic to really make the place more attractive and more, you know, for the 11 mile corridor and for all the neighborhood and everything. I, I don't think we want to overcomplicate this for, for a neighborhood business that's just trying to, to make their business better for the neighborhood. Um, I think to me, I do want to preserve uh, the trees. And if the petitioner decides that's not what they want to do, you got to have a little bit of a disincentive in there. Um, and if they choose, they want to do it anyways and pay a reduced fee based on the healthy trees. Okay. That's why we have the ordinance. And then we'll have more money to plant some, you know, bigger trees throughout other places in the city. And that's what we designed to do. But I, 
I have no problem giving the petitioner that choice based on their own financial circumstance. Who knows? They may get a budget here from some federal aid or city aid or something like that in the next few months that will allow them to do a landscaping plan that, you know, is the dream of the whole entire area. But I don't think we have to overcomplicate this anymore. You know what I mean? I think that, you know, this is a simple application really to have sort of a really cool outdoor dining um, option to, to help a neighborhood business out that's, you know, it's in my neighborhood uh, that people frequent, we frequent, and um, I think we should, you know, just keep it simple, my opinion. All right, is that your opinion or is it, it's a motion? Because what I heard is a motion to approve the site plan uh, without the landscaping component. Yeah, so so I guess I can make a motion. A motion to move um, with the site plan as presented um, with the um, a reduction in the fee schedule to be determined by staff to not account for dead or unhealthy trees um, and uh, by a city arborist or to keep the existing landscape as is today um, with the trees intact up to the petitioner to make that determination. I'll support that. And a couple of, I'm sorry, I, I had two hands up at the same time. Uh, I'm gonna call on, Commissioner yeah, Douglas, go ahead. I'll support. Okay. All right. Is there a discussion about this? Commissioner Douglas? Well, I don't think you need the or. Um, you can approve the site plan as it is with the, you know, the trees and our standing. And, and, you know, I like the arborist thing. You don't need to say or. Um, we're not going to force them to implement the landscaping plan on their site plan. Are we, Mr. Twing? I mean, yes. If, if we you, are? If you approve a specific site plan, we are going to enforce that plan. Got it. Okay, I withdraw my comment. All right, I, uh, oh, Mr. Mr. Curtis. Yeah, I just, uh, I thought I heard the petitioner say they've yet to really find a contractor and how fast are they ready to move ahead? It sounds like they've got some time here. And uh, Ms. Beakey mentioned the idea of giving them time to come up with an alternative here. For instance, what the motion I think I hear on the table um, either imposes some significant, what the petitioner feels like is significant fees to them. I mean, 12,000, 5,000, it still felt like thousands of dollars or live with uh, a dead tree on the east corner northeast corner and nothing in that island back by the trash right like i was wondering if there's another way to think about this plan that would involve some relief for the petitioner and still address some of the obvious needs of that site uh as commissioners have discussed the northeast corner as well as that little island back by the trash neither of those two get addressed in our current motion possibly as I understand it, yeah, I, so think I, I wonder if there's there's time to because uh, uh, I don't want to you know stretch this out for the petitioner. God knows we've stretched out this doggone discussion pretty long. So, <laughs> but if there's time from the petitioner's perspective because they don't really even have contractors lined up, maybe there's a better plan. Well, there's I mean, um, the can I motion just... on the on the, the or is no the petitioner. Please uh, hold on. We're talking on this side of the table, please. The main yeah, the, concern the, is getting uh, rid of the. Can, can the petitioner please? It's it's not your turn right now. Oh, okay. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. So so the intention, Mr. Curtis, was that on the or the petitioner could come back with a new plan. You know, at any time when they have time and contractors lined up. Um, certainly, you can offer an amendment if there's something small or you know I, I, I offer to amend the ordinance to remove this tree or to add this tree in this area. But to me, it it seems simpler to the uh, petitioner to go back, regroup, focus on getting the front part of their store open, um, and then think about, you know, take some of our feedback that we have here and maybe come up with a plan that's even better to everybody. I mean, that's really what's going on in the back of my mind, but, you know, um, you do have the option to amend the motion for sure. All right, I'm gonna uh, make a comment there uh, in response to uh, the mayor and Mr. Curtis. Um, I think that we had a long discussion, and, uh, but I think that the simplest way to approach this is to, is to approve the site plan without 
the landscaping. The petitioner, who I have some confidence in because they have uh, come here with a good plan. And I think we should just let them move forward with the site plan as it is. They know now that we put a lot of value on those two full grown pine trees, which they didn't know before. And now right. that they've had a chance to learn about the potential costs, I have a lot of confidence that this petitioner will come back at some point in the future with the landscape plan. And if they feel like cutting those trees down, they'll, they'll address it. And my, my guess is they probably won't because we just told them we wanna save those trees. But uh, so that would be my suggestion is that we make it as simple as possible. Site plan approved, no landscaping change. But that's my thoughts. Mr. Gantina. I would say I, I agree uh, in principle with that, with one exception being uh, allowing them to replace the, the one tree at the northeast corner, um, just uh, the, at that allowance, because I, I, th I do think that's, you know, that's unsightly. That tree is not helping anything. It's, it's literally just a tree trunk st sticking up in the air. Um, I, I, would, I agree with everything that you just said with the one stipulation that I think we allow for the replacement of that one tree with no penalty whatsoever. All right, well, that could be a motion, but since we already have a motion on the table, please keep that in mind and let us discuss Mr. Mayor's motion. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, if Mr. Gantino wanted to make an am amendment on the or element of that, um, he could do so, and then we could vote on that, and then it would be part of this motion. And then your point is very valid, Mr. Casada, but, you know, we still... You know, although it complicates things from uh, Mr. Tween's meeting minutes, probably it has the same result of what we're doing right now. So, you know, uh, either way, I don't care. I mean, at the end of the day, um, I just want to give options to the to the petitioner. And if if right now a redraw is is in the purview of this commission, you know, we can vote no on this one and go back and just, you know, do whatever. But I, I, I think that um, we're all on the same page. The mechanics of how we do it, you know, I'm not partial to. And I do think we should include that tree one in there. So either make an amendment or we vote on this and then make the amendment later. Motion later, it doesn't matter. So I can go ahead and make that amendment to the motion now. Um, so the the motion will be amended to on the for the second portion of that, the or portion where the applicant uh, essentially does nothing. Um, essentially removes no trees, makes no changes with the exception of replace, being allowed to replace the tree at the northeast corner with no penalty. Okay, thank you. So what we have is an amendment to the or second half of Mr. Mayor's motion. Mr. Twain, do we have to second the amendment or? Yep. Second. Okay, Mr. Curtis second. So now we have a motion that is oh. there that Part one states that we'll approve the site plan, but we won't we won't impose costs for damaged or unhealthy trees based on a review by an arborist, or they don't have to do anything with the landscape with the exception that they can replace the northeast uh, tree in the northeast corner. Do I have that right? Correct, but we have to vote on the amendment to make that, and then we vote on the motion once it's amended. Okay, I just want to be clear what we're voting on, and I appreciate that. Okay, is there further discussion? Are we ready to vote on the amendment? Looks like we're ready to vote on the amendment. Okay, I'm going to take this as a vote on Mr. Gantina's amendment. Mr. Curtis. Aye. Mr. Gantina. Yes. Ms. Beakey. Yes. Commissioner Douglas. Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Mr. Booster. Yes. And I'm a yes. So we have amended the motion, Mayor Fournier which has been seconded by Mr. Kluster, and it's on the table. Is there any other discussion of this or are we ready to vote on? Seeing no hands up, I'm gonna call for the roll call vote for the mayor's two-part motion there, which has been amended. Mr. Curtis. Yes, please. Mr. Gantina. Yes. Ms. Beakey. Yes. Commissioner Douglas. Yes. Mayor Fournier. Aye. Booster. Yes. And I'm a yes. Motion passes. And so the site plan is approved. Congratulations to the petitioner on that. Thank Apparently you. Now, 
Mr. Mayor, Mr. Kisada, yeah. I just want to say thank you. That was a difficult thing to manage and you kept with it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Well, he's our chair. All right, um, Ms. Beebe. Can I just a quick question? Tim, or Mr. Twang, it, with the comments that come in from the public that we don't read into the record but come by email, are they shared with the petitioners so that they also have that information? Well, they're all posted uh, so the petitioner can read them and see them. Uh, we don't distribute them separately. Where, where are they posted? They're posted at the end of the report that's in your agenda packet. So they received the same report, exactly like we received it with those things attached. Right. Okay. Right. Anyway, I only wanted to say that I, I, I think this is great and I'm glad things move forward. And there were a couple of little things from neighbors in there, like closing the garbage cans and such that maybe will be useful information to you just generally, not related to this necessarily discussion. Um, and I wish you well with your uh, renovations and everything that you're going to be doing. Okay. They're not done yet. They got one Thank more. You. Um, so uh, I have a question, Mr. Twing, are we, are we going, we have a, a I think the antebellum apartments is, uh, or is that next or are we going to stick with? Uh, no, we're going to do the sign next for uh, Camilla so they can go home. Okay, great. All right. So uh, this is a sign variance uh, for the same property. Mr. Twing, please bring up, uh, up to speed here. Um, well, they're, they are proposing to reface the existing freestanding slash pole sign. Um, you should have a, a copy of the proposal in, in their appearance in front of you. Um, that existing sign uh, exceeds the allowable height and it also exceeds the allow allowable maximum square footage. Uh, the sign uh, based on information is about 23 feet, uh, seven, seven inches. And it has a little over 66 and a quarter square feet in area. Sign area two allows the sign, a freestanding sign, to be no more than 16 feet and no bigger than 42 square feet in area. Um, so that's the requested variance they're asking you to grant uh, to allow them to maintain uh, the freestanding sign and reface it. <clears throat> All right. And the petitioner is still here. Uh, does the petitioner have a uh, further uh, explanation as to why they uh, feel they're entitled to the variance. Yeah, I can go through that. So again, taking a look at item number three within the review letter and the items in which you have to assess this under. Item A actually discusses about location. This is not a matter of location. This is a matter of height and square footage. So I think item A is uh, a mute point and doesn't really apply to our variance or our request. Um, item number B regarding the appeal and uh, from a, an exceptional or unique circumstances. Um, prior to Camilla moving into this operation roughly about 10 years ago, um, you know, dating back to about 2007, there was no face in that sign when Pizza Hut moved out and the building became vacant. Um, after that, roughly around 2009, there was a temporary real estate sign placed in that face. And then after Camilla moved in, she was allowed to put her signage within the existing structure that is on the site. Through years, as we all know, um, you know, companies do update their marketing and their logos. The request is due to the change in the logo. Uh, the new logo is shown within your document, or if you want to see one in person, there's one along um, Orchard Lake Road in Farmington Hills. The, the hardship here is the signage ordinance changed on us. We did not request the change. And due to the ordinance change, it is deemed our sign legal non-conforming. Um, and per the ordinance states that, you know, it, it needs to be updated. Um, you know, item number C uh, will not alter the essential character of the area. Again, the signage is already there. We're not asking to put a larger sign in it. We're not changing the, the amount of luminosity coming out of the sign actually the new logo has more opaque surface than it does have clear surface, which the current sign already has, because as you can see, it is of a black background with the logo on it and so forth. Um, you know, regarding the alleged hardship, the, you know, the change of the sign size and configuration will result in less visibility from the traffic along Levin Mall Road, um, since it would be screened by neighboring businesses and buildings, considering that some of the buildings are further forward on the property than what our, our, uh, our building is. Um, item number E, again, the hardship is due to the change in the ordinance. 
And then F regarding you know, substantial justice, um, doing a quick tour up and down 11 mile road using Google Earth and looking at dates and everything. Um, at some point in time, Tubby Submarine has changed their sign as well. So I'm not certain as to the dates in which the ordinance was put in place and whether or not that sign actually went through a variance uh, request to be able to allow it to keep the existing sign, keep the little you know, um, statue on the top of it of Tubby, and then also changing the actual sign on that. And then, you know, there really is no lesser relaxation to this um, in the request of the ordinance because if a lesser relaxation still requires us to change the structure of the sign, that becomes a monetary burden on the client because all we were trying to do was to replace the existing faces, leave the structure in place, and, and not go through um, the cost of having to cut down, tear down the sign, foundation work, electrical work, and so forth that all goes into it. Um, that results in a fairly substantial fee just for, you know, changing the logo and the, and the marketing of the building. So we, you know, gratefully request that the approval of the variance allows us is, you know, by the planning commission to allow us to go forward and just change the face, but not change the structure of the sign. All right, are there questions for the petitioner? All right, I have one. Um, you mentioned the foundation, but isn't it possible to simply cut the pole and, and put a new uh, panel on top that would be conforming? I am not an iron worker, steel worker to assess the condition of that pole to make that determination, unfortunately. All right, thank you. Any other uh, questions for the petitioner? All right, um, let's bring it back to the side of the table for discussion or motion. Commissioner Douglas. So I, I can't recall when the planning commission was also made the sign ordinance review board, but it's been easily, Mr. Twing, 10, 12 years ago and I've been on the planning commission for, for 14 years. And I, the Tubby sign has been in place since then. Um, so um, it, it's, we, have, I, we have not permitted it to stay. It was just there um, long ago. Um, and I realize that this is a, a cost for a small business, but um, when it comes to changing the, and, and Mr. Remlinger knows this, that you change an ordinance and a use becomes non-conforming and there are conditions um, that dictate when that non-conforming use has to be made conforming and this is one of those. Um, and as I've said to the, the Planning Commission many times, we only get one bite of the apple. If we don't um, bring this sign into um, conformance with our sign ordinance, it's going to be there for another 20 or 30 years. This is the chance we get. And we do this one at a time. Every time a new business or business changes something and they want a new sign, we have like one chance to um, make that change that ultimately will result in a more attractive um, a less sign intensive corridor. Um, and so I am going to make a motion to um, deny their request for a variance. Is there a second? A second. Second by Ms. Beakey. Discussion. Ms. I Beakey. want to comment that um, in, in the discussion on the modernization of the front of the building, um, you know, one of the comments was to modernize and have it look more contemporary, more like the downtown. And I think modernizing the sign and bringing the height into conformance will come in, into conformance with our uh, sign standards will help um, in that modernization. So I think it should be revised in this process. Other comments on discussion on the motion? I will make a comment. Uh, I was uh, over there today and Chicken Shack, the neighbor, I believe their sign is in conformance. Looks nice, the, I believe right across the street, Subway. I don't know if it's 100% in conformance. It certainly looks smaller and shorter than uh, the sign in question here. Um, so I think that I agree with Commissioner Douglas that this is our opportunity to, uh, to, to bring uh, more of the corridor in a conformance. I also have some uh, uh, 
question really about how expensive something like that is, I think it can probably be done, although I don't have uh, dollar figures on that. I certainly think that other, uh, we've had other people who've uh, uh, amended their sign rather than put a new one in, but uh, so I will be supporting the motion. Any other comments? All right, seeing none, I will call for the vote. Mr. Curtis. Um, yes, I'm in favor. Mr. Gantina. Yes. Ms. Beaky. Yes. Commissioner Douglas. Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Mr. Kluster. Yes. I'm a yes. So your um, request for advance is denied, uh, but your uh, special land use and uh, site plan is approved with the uh, the options there. And uh, we certainly uh, look forward to seeing uh, what you're going to do there. I certainly am a, a, a patron of your restaurant myself, and I'm very uh, uh, I like going there. And I'll be back. So uh, we wish you the very best of, of luck. I didn't get a chance to say what I was going to say earlier uh, regarding the trees. This is where we run into a big problem because the tree that is fully grown um, in front and on the north side, we, the opposite side from the one that was um, destroyed, it blocks the um, sign. The, the owners from Chicken Shack has come to us twice already to ask us if we could remove the tree and they would help us um, with the cost of that. But, um, you know, we never, of course, we weren't going to cut down the tree, but that does block, that tree does block our sign. Um, so it's been, that's been a problem. A lot of times people say they don't see, they didn't, they don't see us um, because of the tree. I don't know if, I think moving that sign down is probably gonna even be, you know, they probably really won't see us coming when they're going, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm think they're gonna be going east, I guess, or west, west down 11 mile road. So it's, it's been a problem, but I appreciate you approving the site plan. Um, and I guess we'll just see how things work out. Yes. Okay, thank you for your comment. And again, we wish you the very best of luck. Thank you. All right. Our next order of business is, I believe, the antebellum apartments. That is in a second here. Uh, I lost my uh, page there, but uh, so let me just make sure I put it on the record here what it is. All right, this would be, uh, oh, this is a site plan uh, 210506. This is for 2230 West 14 Mile. Uh, that's correct. Um, it is uh, located on the north side of uh, 14 Mile. Uh, between Elmhurst and Woodland. Uh, the major roads are Coolidge and Crooks. Uh, the site is zoned multifamily. Uh, the petitioner is proposing to construct a 90 by 20 foot uh, carport along the east property line. Uh, it would allow for approximately uh, 10 parking spaces. Uh, they're proposing that the carports would be 10 feet off of the uh, property line or right-of-way line of 14 mile road rather than set back to 25 feet uh, uh, to be in line with the uh, uh, multi-family building that's there. Um, the east property line would have a setback of six feet. There's a little um, uh, grass area that runs along that east property line uh, where the uh, carports would uh, uh, come up to. Um, basically, the, obviously the site plan report indicates that uh, the planning commission's discretion in regards to the proposed setbacks uh, 
primarily the one along 14 mile road uh, being within the 25 feet. Uh, the, secondly, the carport should be designed to make sure that all storm water that runs off the top uh, stays on their property. Uh, so we'll look for those uh, details as part of the uh, plan. And then it's really just the standard contingencies uh, uh, that are uh, on every site plan. All right, is the petitioner here? I don't know if Carol got him in the waiting room or is anybody there, in there? There is no one in the waiting room. Apparently they didn't come in. Hmm, I don't know if we've ever had that situation before. Um, Once or twice. So um, does the planning commission uh, have the uh, ability to dispose of a, of a matter without the petitioner, uh, or is this something that, uh, um, well, I say dispose of, discuss and, and, and vote on it, uh, or, or, or what, are, what are our options there? Maybe Mr. Uh, Lewis is gonna speak up. Well, from my perspective where this has occurred in the past, uh, from the planning division's point of view, this is your site plan. Once it's submitted and it's in front of you, it's yours. Uh, you have the right to do with it as you feel fit. If you want to wait for the petitioner to give them one more opportunity to show up, you could postpone it. On the other hand, if you th think it's a, a site plan that should move forward, you could approve it. Uh, and mm -hmm. thirdly, if you felt it was something you wouldn't approve, uh, you could deny it. So you got, I believe you have all your options. Uh, the fact that the petitioner is not here is their choice. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. All right, is there um, any other questions for Mr. Twink? Is there a discussion about this? I'll make a comment here when I, oh, Mr. Curtis, you go ahead. Yeah, well, I just, my initial thought is we don't know it's their choice. There could be some emergency in their life and I would hate for them to not be able to be heard on their petition. Um, especially if the commission was inclined to deny it some for some reason. So I guess my inclination is to give them a chance to present their case to us rather than act on it without it in their absence. All right. Is that a motion to postpone? Yes, please. That's a motion to postpone. All right. Is there a second? Second. Dantina seconds. Is there further discussion here? Um, the only thing I'll say is that, uh, and I guess it'd be a question for Mr. Twing, and, and uh, is that this plan, you say this, they have to show that the water stays on the property. And is it my understanding that you don't, you don't have the answer to that? That's, that's not reflected in this plan? Uh, well, generally, what we've had them do is just add a gutter system to the downside of it so that it does drain back onto the property. Uh, given that it's got a six foot uh, lawn area along the uh, east property line, I believe it's going to come down onto that grass. But generally, we require them to uh, put a gutter system there so that the drains come back onto their own parking lot. And I don't have that detail at this point. That's why it's listed as a contingency. All right. All right, Commissioner Douglas. Yeah, I just, I can't imagine what questions I would have for an applicant for what seems to be a pretty small and straightforward project. Um, so I'm going to vote no on the motion only, and if it fails, I'll introduce a motion to approve the site plan. All right, um, appreciate that comment. I have to say, I also was inclined when I saw this to supported uh, going in. Um, so um, that's two votes for approving the site plan if, if Mr. Curtis's motion is, is uh, fails. Uh, is there further discussion? All right, seeing none, uh, we will vote on Mr. Curtis's motion to postpone, seconded by Mr. Gunty. Do you have a comment, uh, Woody? Well, yeah, I guess I just wanted to speak to my support of Mr. Curtis's motion. I'd certainly like to hear from the applicant as to um, why the decision behind um, the not being in conformance with the setback on the 
south property line and only providing for the 10 feet versus I believe it was 25 feet that was um, in the ordinance. Uh, not being able to just understand the decision behind that is, is why I'm supporting the, the postponement. Um, I'm not necessarily inclined to approve or deny it just yet. Uh, I'd just like to hear the answer to that, which is why I'm supporting the motion to postpone. All right, any other comments, questions, discussion? All right, we will vote on Mr. Curtis's motion to uh, postpone. Mr. Curtis. Yes. Mr. Gantina. Yes. Ms. Beaky. Yes. Mr. Douglas. No. Mr. Mayor. No. Mr. Kluster. Yes. Well, I'm gonna say no. So uh, the motion does not pass. And now we have an opportunity to... I think it did pass. Oh, it did? I do believe it did pass. One, Kluster. You need, you need four yeses, right? Yeah, Mr. Curtis, Mr. Gantina, Ms. Beaky, and Mr. Kluster voted yes. Oh, Mr. Kluster voted yes, I'm sorry. All right, my mistake. All right, well, the motion passes, it's postponed. Sorry about that. All right, so now um, on the agenda, the next is the discussion of the topic, uh, again, from the joint meetings of the Zoning Board of Appeals, if you recall, uh, we postponed this last time because we were missing some of our members and we wanted to have a more uh, full discussion on this issue. Um, Mr. Twing, why don't you introduce and reintroduce this issue and, and tell us where we're at here. You uh, distributed some more. Uh, um, well, I think there, yeah, yeah, there, as you, as you did highlight, there were several issues that were raised uh, in a joint meeting between the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Commission. Uh, those issues were uh, pared down by the Planning Commission to what uh, was listed uh, as 11 topics or issues, types of questions. Uh, I, I won't run through each one of those other than to say there was a summary sheet that went out that, um, let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. Um, I'll touch on them. Uh, okay. Um, item one had to do with reducing the minimum lot size areas for multifamily. Item two had to reduce, in regards to reduce minimum lot sizes for duplexes. Uh, item three was revised setbacks required for multifamily. Item four was in uh, reduce required parking for multifamily. Uh, item five was reduce lot widths and side yard setbacks for corner lots and single family. Uh, item six, was in regards to requiring certain conditions, community benefits with a greater density for multifamily or that had requested greater density. Uh, item seven was raising building height standards, maximums for uh, multifamily and or commercial zones. Uh, item eight was allow more housing in office and commercial zones. Item nine was encourage missing middle housing. Item 10 was allow duplexes and triplexes and single family. And item 11 was in regards to allowing accessory dwelling units uh, in single family. Those are the broad 11 topics. Uh, the reports that went out in the past to discuss them in some detail. Um, what was left with was, I think the planning commission's discussion on when and how you wanted to deal with each of those topics. And the discussion was, uh, the ideas were that were raised in the past, we're proceeding with some community engagement, uh, survey type things. You may recall that Judy Davis, the communication specialist came to, I believe your, no, your 
March meeting, an earlier meeting and discuss what that might look with look like uh, with you um, and what it might cost and the timing on it. Um, so if you were interested in taking some of these issues and doing some uh, community engagement, uh, just separately from those, that was item one. Uh, also, uh, well, that's item two in the columns, I'm sorry. Uh, item one was just following the standard protocols for making ordinance changes and holding public hearings in front of this body. Um, item three or column three that we talked about uh, was doing community engagement during the master plan process. Uh, item four was there was no need to discuss it and the issue would be dropped. Uh, so those are kind of the, the 11 big issues or topic issues that the planning commission was still discussing. Uh, and it kind of broke it out into uh, four types of options. Uh, uh, and, and each of you, I think, had some opinions on those. And uh, I think staff simply looking for direction. Um, all right. And we've seen these before and we've spent some time on them, but there's still a lot to talk about. Um, I guess, uh, is there uh, comments uh, or questions from Mr. Twain? Ms. Beaky, get her hand up first. On the chart that was sent today, what do the yellow, what do the colors mean? Well, that came from uh, Commissioner Douglas, so. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, okay, thank you. Well, Commissioner Douglas had her hand up. Maybe she'll tell us what the colors mean. I was going to do that. Do, do others have that? Do you want Tim to share that screen or sh I could share that screen? Um, I think you should share the screen because I have some reason I didn't get it. Okay. You probably sent it to me. I didn't look, probably. You're all set, Commissioner. Thank you, Carol. And, and the mayor wanted to make a comment there as well. Yeah, just, uh, you know, Ms. Schwanger did write that there is a uh, public comment here. So maybe before we go too far deep into the uh, information, we might not want to miss that point. That's all. Thank you. Uh, why don't we um, why don't we do that, uh, Ms. Schwanger? Do you have the public comment? I do. Um, I just have to stop share sharing. Oh, you have to stop the sharing screen. I'm well, sorry. because I have to share my screen to do it. Oh, okay. Screen, but in computer sound. Janice Wagman, this is regarding agenda item F1. The survey questions attached to the meeting appear to address issues that should be part of a master plan rewrite, not a planning zoning commission agenda item. Eight of the 11 questions refer to, quote, encouraging more housing. The very first question to the residents should be, do you want more housing? In other words, higher density in Royal Oak. That is exactly what this represents, higher density, and should be included in any survey questions where that is the result. Question number nine, should Royal Oak encourage more miss missing middle housing? As Ms. Beeky asked and Ms. Between confirmed, we don't know the status of the supply and demand of our current housing inventory. What is the vacancy rate? The target market analysis only identified types of existing housing, not demand. You're putting the proverbial cart before the horse by asking the residents to, quote, encourage more housing without being able to answer those questions. Questions number 10 and 11, should you encourage more housing by eliminating single-family zoning? Definitely not. If you are going to include this question in the survey, you should include another question. Would you want duplexes, triplexes, or more on each side of your home? Each triplex could have six cars and few, fewer parking spaces required. More traffic on your street, rental units in the backyard next to your property, more density, more congestion, more noise, more impact on the environment and infrastructure, but this time on your own street. 
I belong to several Facebook groups in Southeast Michigan. I've seen many people from Royal Oak announce they have moved to other areas, such as Rochester Hill, because it was less crowded, less dense, and they got more house for less money. With the impact of the pandemic on the office structure, people are working from home or only needing to visit their office occasionally. This means Royal Oak's location will become less desirable. Planning more housing in our 12 square miles may actually create more vacancies and the urban sprawl you're trying to avoid. Thank you. Jenna. All right. Let's go back to sharing the screen uh, and let's look at Ms. Douglas's colorful chart. All right, we see it, at least I see it. Okay, we're gonna take a shot at this and see what people think. Um, I'm gonna, and I color coded these items because uh, to me, this is the, uh, what would make sense in dealing with them. Um, I'm looking, so looking at item number, uh, what is it, uh, five. Um, this is the, the fence issue, corner lot fence issue. And I think we discussed this at some length. I think Mr. Tim or Mr. Twing asked if we thought this was a zoning ordinance, a setback ordinance issue or a, a fence ordinance issue. And I think he concluded that it was a fence ordinance issue. Um, I just talked to the chair of the ZBA and they have three items like this on their agenda this week, three corner lots with fencing issues. So um, I'd be in, I, I think perhaps we as a commission could make a motion tonight to um, direct staff to revise the uh, corner the ordinance about corner lots to accommodate the issues that are coming before the ZBA. Um, I think items, the items in pink, eight through 12, um, yes, uh, do belong as part of a master plan discussion. Um, these days, uh, master planning is, uh, uh, is, is far removed from what we saw in uh, 20 years ago when our plan was developed. The tools and methods for community engagement, for making sure that um, a city's uh, master plan reflects the will of all the people. We have uh, tremendous tools and ability to really listen to a broad swath of the public and make decisions based on the people's common good. Um, so, and, and I think the and the mayor has articulated this very well uh, in the past, and that is the question is, um, do we want to be, should people who want to live here have an opportunity to live here? Um, and that includes our, our seniors as they age, if they choose to move out of their home, is there a place where they can live to stay in Royal Oak? Um, but it also includes um, the people who serve us, should school teachers, should police officers, should truck drivers, should waiters be able to live in the community they serve? Um, and, and I think that's a big picture question that absolutely belongs as part of a master plan discussion. Um, the item in green, item um, six, this is an issue. I, I would remove this from our agenda completely because the city commission itself has asked staff to develop a list of community benefits that we can offer in circumstances where we as the city have control of a, a property, either because they're asking for a planned unit development, and so they're asking for something special from the city, or where it's city-oriented property. Um, so I think I, the mayor and I can both assure the rest of the planning commissioners that that item will be addressed, and, and it'll help ameliorate some of the issues we as planning commissioners have addressed when we look at things like planned unit developments. Um, those items in yellow, I think, are the ones where we have a need for um, to, to educate the public. And I don't know if it's a, a town hall. It's entirely possible that the regular community engagement that we do at our commission meetings may be sufficient. But um, I mean, I expect that very few Royal Oakers understand the implications of multifamily height, setbacks, and parking. Um, and we have a teaching opportunity here. 
Um, I do think we can address these topics through our standard community engagement at planning commission meetings, but we have to do it with pictures and information that everyone can understand. Now, it may well be at the end of the day that most people, once they understand that, shrug at the possibility of um, changing setbacks or parking requirements. We have an obligation to um, uh, educate people. And I'm not inclined uh, to wait until the results of a master plan. I think we can deal with this expediently and, I, and, uh, and to streamline the work of this planning commission, if we deal with this sooner than a master plan, it means we get results in something less than two years. Um, so I mean, that, that would be my suggestion and, and, I'm, and I'll wait my fellow commissioners. Um, uh, in fact, let me just say it. Uh, another thing, I'll speak to the issue of density um, and point out that 40 years ago, there were 80,000 people living in Royal Oak. Today, there are 60,000 people living in Royal Oak. So concerns about density and, and the ability of the city to accommodate a greater population, I think we can answer by the fact that we have an infrastructure that we built for 80,000 people. Um, uh, and, and when we talk about, you know, people's living choices and being able to um, live where they want because they can work remotely, I think Royal Oak is the city that people want to live in. Um, they want to be able to walk to amenities. Um, they, they want a, a compact downtown. So, I mean, I think as people, you know, as the workplace changes, we are going to find um, more people want to live in Royal Oak because of that. And it may change the nature of our uh, residential zoning. That is where you have more people working from home with home offices, et cetera. Um, that's certainly an issue that would, will come up, I expect, as part of a master plan process. So that's my case, you know, have at it. All right. And if you uh, can uh, remove the screen sharing there so we can open up our, we can all see Oh, maybe I can do this anyways. I got it. Okay, very good. Uh, other comments? All right, I'll make a comment. Oh, Mr. Curtis. Yeah, I was just going to jump in and say, I definitely agree. What well, I don't know what color it was because it's off the screen. I think blue, maybe, that, that uh, ZBA would love to hear us deal with the fence issues. Um, and uh, I think green was city com city commission business with the community benefit agreements and so on and so forth. I I'm excited to see the commission take the city commission take that up so the planning commission can get direction on those things as we see uh, plans in the future. Um, and I think pink um, had to do with uh, Commissioner Douglas's concept is that those are really kind of forward thinking ideas about the uh, that, that ought to be taken up with the master plan. My only concern, and I don't have a solution, but I'm just these yellow, they're so, I, I appreciate the concept like that the educational opportunity and people, you know, um, but I almost, before people understand a problem, these are very specific solutions. And I think it's kind of challenging to start addressing all these specifics in our normal processes, though I'm new to these normal processes. So I'm just my perspective of uh, where I sit. It might be really challenging in the normal process to, to do a strong job of uh, education here in our own planning commission meetings. But I appreciate the concept that if it gets pushed to the master plan process, it could be a couple of years away from resolution. So, but I just, I'm, I'm challenged by the idea of having such specific solutions uh, being, you know, talked about while people might not really understand the discussion that they're addressing yet. So those are my thoughts. All right, thank you. Other comments? Mr. Gantina. So I just wanted to add um, that the, the items that you're just referring to in terms of uh, trying to handle them through our traditional forms of community engagement as they are important, but ne not necessarily wanting to um, have any action take too long. So we don't necessarily want to wait for the master plan. I guess I would offer to the group, um, I guess the notion that perhaps it's an opportunity to engage with um, 
So I am on the group that's also uh, helping to create the sustainability and climate action plan. With that, there is quite a bit of community engagement that's involved as well to do exactly this, sort of get residents up to speed on the problem, but also to, um, to engage and encourage them to take part in some of the other uh, work that's happening related to that, that uh, sustainability and climate action plan. So one of the things I would offer up is that these items in yellow are still handled as part of our normal course of discussion and community engagement. But as part of that, we, we offer up uh, at least the opportunity for folks to understand that there are other ways that they can go get educated on some of these topics. Because when we start talking about zoning and zoning changes to allow for um, either different building types or more density or whatever it may be, those are also things that are gonna be uh, under consideration when we start talking about the sustainability and climate action plan. So I agree with you, I don't necessarily want um, community input and engagement to take forever on those items. But at the same time, I think it's maybe an opportunity for us um, to start the engagement, but also encourage um, residents to take part in other ways of, uh, of educating themselves on the problem, because I do agree with that, identify the problem first. All right, thank you. Other comments? Ms. Beaky. Um, again, on the blue um, and the lot size and width, and, uh, I, I agree that perhaps we could address that sooner rather than later. And, and I'm glad to hear the city commission is looking at um, the community benefits issue, which I think can be both, both for private sector, but also about for city issues. Um, if we think about investments being made, what the community benefits might even be coming, coming out of public investments. Um, I saw today when I was reviewing the um, city managers, the, uh, the budget, the proposed budget for 21, 22, um, and the conveyance letter at the beginning. And I did note that there's a comment about um, a little bit deeper analysis of our housing study, housing gap, um, which was there mentioned there. I don't know how that's gonna be articulated. Again, I think I've mentioned um, here before, it was, the woman was quoting me, I guess that, again, I think we need a little bit more analysis on our, our gap in housing. Again, I understand Royal Oaks condo turnover is at a rate um, and, and um, Mr. Curtis would know better than I do. Um, that's that's can, shows a balanced market in terms of uh, buyers and sellers and such. Um, and in this discussion, when we look at um, ways to keep Royal Oak affordable to a range of people, I think we have to look at um, community land trust and other mechanisms because it's not just about the zoning and it's not just about the buildings, but it's also about the rent rates and such. Um, and so I think that's something that has to become come in the mix somewhere in the discussion. And, and, talk, and, and related to what uh, Mr. Guntina was just saying, I think through the sustainability planning, and I understand the AARP um, analysis is still ongoing, that some of these topics can, we can get citizen input, input on some of these topics through other mechanisms, but I still think the education process, the input gathering process on everything in yellow and red should still be looking forward to the master planning and then the zoning would be adjusted in accord with the master plan. Um, I guess tweaking it in the interim, um, I'm not as confident that will be reflective of, of the community's um, interest, I guess. And I feel like it would, um, would benefit us to be consciously thinking um, that the, our discussions and education process will roll into um, that master planning process. Now that we know it's happening, which just came up in the last couple of months. Other uh, comments? Okay, I, I'll make a comment. So I went through like uh, Commissioner Douglas did and I looked at these line by line and uh, I voted the way I voted. Uh, and, and I'm not anywhere near as sophisticated on the, on the um, you know, city planning stuff as, as some of the other people on the committee here, but um, I felt that a lot of these items are broader policy issues having to do with uh, housing that would impact the type and nature of housing, uh, location of housing in a, in a way that's more profound than the others, uh, some of the others. And so I do think that those sorts of issues, and I may not look at it the same way you do, uh, in fact, I obviously didn't because I saw your chart is different than mine, um, that those things should be rolled into the master plan. I really looked at a couple of items 
particularly four, five, and seven, which are, is the uh, parking for a multifamily, which is really apartments, uh, the side yard setbacks with the corner lots, and uh, the building heights uh, in the commercial, multifamily or in commercial zones. Those are things that come up. They're sort of specific. I thought we could deal with those things ahead of time. Uh, specifically, you know, the required parking on the apartments, we see that all the time. And we usually approve it because it makes sense. I would think that that, that is not a broad housing policy implication in that to me. Um, so I, I suggested we could look at that. Certainly the, the corner lots, the corner lots, uh, dealing with them is not gonna change the nature of a neighborhood. It's not gonna change what kind of housing goes in. Uh, you're really dealing with an existing condition there. And the building heights, again, we've had numerous uh, situations where the, the building height was the only thing, uh, the type of building is the type of building we, we would want there, just the building height was an issue. Um, so those were kind of specific. Um, and the rest of them though, I think a lot of them, most of them do have broader policy implications, which I don't think it's probably a good idea to, to, to address those just at the committee level. So I would endorse the idea of picking uh, one of the more important ones, which I think is the side yard set bets for, for corner lots and, um, and, and working on it. Better to get something done than nothing done uh, on something that needs to be addressed. Uh, maybe we get a lot of blowback on that. I don't think we will. We might, uh, but at least we'll find out. So I would, I would encourage doing that. I also think that the, the, the parking requirement for multifamily is, is equal in that regard. But anyways, those are my thoughts. I, I, would, I would endorse picking one or two of these that if you agree with me that they're, they're not, they don't have broad implications for housing policy um, and, uh, and move forward with one or two of those. And, and I specifically four, five, and seven are the three that I had in mind. All right, any other comments? Mr. Guntina? I would just want to say that I, I could support that because um, we got to start somewhere. Um, I think I agree that those that you, you've highlighted, uh, four, five, and seven, um, don't necessarily uh, represent broad policy implications based on any discussions or decisions we make on those topics. Uh, so I'd be in support of that. Mr. Douglas. I'm gonna start with a motion um, that we instruct staff to um, uh, examine and revise the uh, lot width and side yard setbacks for uh, corner lots vis-a-vis -vis fencing um, in single family zoning um, as discussed with the, in the, our joint meeting with the ZBA. Is there a second? Mr. Curtis. The second, Mr. second by Mr. Curtis. All right, further discussion on this issue. Hmm, all right, seeing none, I guess I'll call for the vote. Mr. Curtis. Yes. Mr. Guntina. Yes. Ms. Beakey. Yes. Mr. Douglas. Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Booster. Yes. And I'm a yes. So you're sending some, some work your way there, Mr. Twing. <laughs> I don't know if that was an endorsed thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Um, let's see, what else is, uh, is there any further discussion on this topic? Um, I think that's that's progress. So I would, uh, I'm sure uh, there's people on the zoning board who are, are happy. Mr. Guntina. Uh, I guess I, I do have one item to bring up uh, on number six. Um, Commissioner Douglas had mentioned that city commission has instructed staff to create uh, a list of community benefits um, that could potentially be offered. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's been discussed yet, but I would ask that um, the Environmental Advisory Board uh, have an opportunity to weigh in on some of the potential benefits that could be added to that list. 
Yeah, I think that's going to be a, a pretty broad community-wide discussion. Um, and, I, and I know we're waiting. We've got a new city attorney coming on board June 14th. And, and you know, he's going to get a pile of papers three feet high dumped on his desk. And, and this is one of those things. So um, I don't know that we will have fast action on it. But yeah, I think this is a, a very wide-ranging discussion. It, it has to do not only with environmental issues, um, uh, with human needs, but also, you know, finance, city, city finance. So it's, it's a pretty broad um, topic. Great, thank you. All right, thank you for that. All right, any other uh, discussion on this topic? Commissioner Douglas. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going for it here. Um, I'm gonna make a motion that we instruct staff to um, develop, uh, re, uh, to develop uh, uh, revised parking standards for zoning uh, in for uh, multifamily zoning um, and to explore um, alternatives to our current building height standards for multifamily and commercial zones. There's a second. Looking if, if there's anybody. Second. I will second that. Okay, Mr. Curtis seconds it also again. All right, we had a tie there between yourself and Mr. Kluster. But all right, so we uh, the motion has been seconded. This is a uh, motion to instruct staff to develop um, um, options. I think for uh, the uh, the parking requirement for multifamily and the building heights for multifamily and or commercial zones. And is there further discussion on this? Ms. Beakey. I guess I'm a little confused because I thought this whole process that we had gotten to up to this point was at this juncture to discuss how we would gather additional community input on these topics in order to help us make decisions about these issues moving forward, not to have staff do more research because we had the staff do the research previously on two different occasions, the joint meeting as well as the further research they did recommending ways to get community input. So I thought the process we're in right now was deciding how we would gather that input, whether it would coalesce in the master plan or we would have some, if you were to pick these two topics, for example, to move forward, that we would have some modicum of community input related to how we would then proceed um, which I thought we discussed, for example, would be an educational process to talk about why these issues are important, some of the options, get community input, and then potentially take an action. I didn't think we were talking about topics to take action on via this process we've been undertaking. That's what I understood the last time it went to us to, to prioritize was how we would gather community input, not have staff start doing research. Um, At least that's what I understood we were doing. Okay, and we'll, uh, I'll, just, I'll just quickly let you know what my understanding is. The chart that, that you know, we took the poll, we all had our input on the polls. The first column is to do what we're doing right now. The first column would be proceed with standard community engagement, public comment, uh, public hearings at meetings. That's, that would be us. So my, my pitch was that these were items that I didn't think were broad, enough in terms of policy impact where we needed to, that was my opinion, and uh, Commissioner Douglas has, has uh, taken that and run with it. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. I couldn't find that chart, so I just have this one in front of me, and I forgot that uh, those are the other columns. Okay, yes. I would like to wait to the master plan, so, okay. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, and I'll just add, I mean, it's a fair point, Ms. Beakey, and I think with, with these ones, we'll still get public feedback and input. It just doesn't have to be in a you know, such a robust collaborative, you know, these are more to the point and things that we've espoused <laughs> one way or the other anyways as commission. So I think, uh, you know, although I, I do agree with you, but I, I think for these ones, the carve out makes sense uh, given the nature of them. All right, other comments? All right. Seeing none, I will call for the vote on, on this. Mr. Curtis. Yes. Mr. Gantina. Yes. Ms. Beakey. Uh, no. 
Commissioner Douglas. Yes. Mayor. Yes. Booster. Yes. And I'm a, a yes. So we send more stuff, Mr. Tim swings way. So, uh, but it'll be interesting. And I'm certainly, I'm sure we will get community feedback. Um, I'm sure we will, but certainly uh, expect to, and we'll invite it. So, any um, other comments on this on this topic, on this agenda item? Yes, just that we should all put mentally put a pin in the items that we have not acted on today, the ones that I, 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 I since we have a consensus that they belong as part of a master plan, just to make sure that they stay alive as we move forward with that process. I appreciate that. I'm not sure they can be avoided in the master plan process, but all right. Um, very good. Um, anything else on this agenda item? All right, and I'll, there's not much left on the agenda here. Let's see what's next. Uh, administrative site plan approvals. We, uh, we saw those, Tim, uh, Mr. Twing, do you have any uh, thing to add to those approvals? No, those are, those are informational. So you can see some of the things that are going on. All right. And then we uh, got a copy of the Michigan Planner, which I did not read, but it had a lot of uh, interesting articles in it, but I didn't get around to read it. I don't know if anybody did. Mr. Curtis. Oh, I just wondered, because it's my first time seeing this uh, list of administratively approved items, if, uh, Tim, if that seems like a pretty standard length of items for that period of time, for that, that many months, or does it seem like more items than usual or less? I'm just curious. Uh, with your experience mm, anyway. no that's probably that's probably pretty common yeah thanks i was just curious thanks pretty common all right sorry about that if i didn't see your hand there um just commenting on the i don't know if anybody saw the articles and read the articles uh commissioner douglas you had a comment I was so happy to see this attachment on the agenda because I was getting ready to scan this magazine and send it out to the rest of the commission. This is so valuable, so essential to especially us um, and the, the proportions that we want in our downtown and on our streets. Everybody should read this and save it. All right, I will. Thank you. All right, other comments on the uh, other business agenda, item three, the Michigan Planner. All right, we'll move on to the next item, which is adjournment. Um, and uh, I see Mr. List just showed up. Oh, he went away again. He disappeared. There he is. <laughs> just, just, uh, say hello. I'm just stalking the meeting. My... <laughs> All right, very I've been good. here the whole time. I just don't, I don't like to appear very often. All right, nice to see well, you though. Not, not necessarily a discussion item tonight, but I think maybe next month we'll probably have a brief discussion on uh, getting back to in-person meetings and when and how that might occur in the future uh, and get great. input on it. So I, I see Shark. Yeah, by the way, before this meeting tonight, I attended the first ever meeting in the city commission chamber. The Crime Prevention Council met in person at the commission table and it was awesome. <laughs> Great. Off. Well, I will, I will say that yeah, I, yeah. I, I will say that I attended the Orion Township Planning Commission meeting uh, this month and that was in person. That was, they, they, I mean, everybody was spread out, but it was in person. So we're getting to, to that point, I think. All right. Any other comments or questions? All right, not seeing any, I'm just gonna call for a voice vote for adjournment. Yes. Aye. Three. <laughs> Aye. Very good. The meeting is adjourned and we'll see you next month. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone.